Good morning, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen, coffee lovers. My name is Jenny Kwan. I'm the senior program manager at uh, the Sustainable Coffee Program uh, of IDH. Thank you, David, and the team at ICO, uh, Aneta and the 4C Association, and also the partners of the Sustainable Coffee Program for how far we've got so far. As Aneta mentioned, we see Vision 2020 as a global alliance of action-oriented initiatives and programs working together in the coffee sector. We very much recognize the, the need for different institutions and programs to say, this is my initiative. I started it. I funded it. These are my results. But we also hope that you will join this network and join this alliance to take advantage of and build upon the learnings of others to bridge the gaps that we have in the coffee sector between North and South, between Europe, the US, and the rest of the world. As Anetta mentioned, um, I'm going to take you quickly through the, the th some of the thematic areas that we've identified as key issues in the coffee sector today. These might change already in the last year. Uh, topics have been added and uh, topics have become less important as well. As well as taking a really national level approach, so in origin countries, talking together with the farmers and producers and the local private sector and local civil society, together with the local government to identify priorities. We also see that some coordination and work is needed on a global level to be implemented in countries on the ground. You might wonder, if the MOU was only signed in March of this year, how can activities already have taken place? And this is where we see the strength of the MOU partners in the ICO, the 4C Association, and IDH and the Sustainable Coffee Program coming together because we've been working in sustainable coffee for the last few years, some cases, decades, on sustainable coffee already. We hope to increase our impact under the umbrella of this partnership, to increase our impact and form new partnerships to strengthen what we already have. The first topic is national platforms. In many countries, these have already been initiated by the governments and by the private sector to talk together and see what can we do together in some cases, uh, it's more government driven. In other cases, it's more private sector driven. But in any case, we strongly see the need for public-private dialogue to decide on together what are the priorities for our sector, what is the priorities for our country. How can we make our country more competitive in the global coffee sector? How can we work together with other countries to improve that? And how can we work together within our countries to do that? The second theme is national sustainability curricula. And this is something that uh, the Sustainable Coffee Program, together with our partners in country, have been working towards in so far five, uh, four different countries and launching in a couple more. And we've published this booklet here to show you our approach. It's not perfect yet, but it's a way of seeing how can we really work together, public and private, international, national and local, and also private sector and public sector together to work on sustainability in our sector. And in the country, what does sustainability really mean? Is this something that a standard uh, from the north tells us what it is? No, it's really about talking to the farmers, talking to the producer organizations, talking to the traders and the roasters and the research institutions, and also the government bodies within the country to say, well, together, what do we see as the sustainability issues? What do we need in order to have a more thriving coffee sector, to have a more competitive coffee sector, where our farmers are earning a decent livelihood, where they, uh, in some countries, it will be about productivity. In other countries, it will be about reducing the cost of production. And that really depends on each country, and each country is individual, and each country should define for itself what are the priorities and what should they be working on. And we hope to support that from an international level in having learnings from other countries be brought in by having a research collaboration, by having uh, farmers exchange 
on what are the best practices to combat climate change or to increase productivity or to use um, a different or better fertilizer or pesticide or not at all, whatever the, the choice might be. The third theme we see is financial literacy and access to finance. There hasn't yet been a strong engagement of the financial institution on a really systemic level in the coffee sector. A lot of successful programs have happened for rejuvenation and rehabilitation of current crops, for providing access to finance, for inputs, for fertilizer. But this doesn't work in all countries and it doesn't work yet in a, in a large scale. Also, if farmers are getting inputs, uh, using inputs, and they're getting uh, short-term loans to do so, are they really understanding um, what, what profitability for their farm means? Is it about just their income, or is it also about reducing their costs as well? So we're working together with um, the private sector and the public sector, as well as financial institutions and multilateral donors, to do that. There's already been a lot of conversation on finance, and at the last ICO meeting in London uh, earlier this year, many of the large financial institutions also came and gave great examples of where they're working in the coffee sector to provide loans of different sorts and different scale to different stakeholders in the coffee sector. There are also many activities happening on a national level. For example, the, inter the Coffee Finance and Coffee Sustainability Forum held last month in Lampung in Indonesia that was strongly supported by the government of Lampung and also had great participation from many financial institutions. The third theme is gender and youth. One is about the equality of women in decision-making households. What does it matter if you increase productivity, you increase the income of a farming family, and then that extra money is spent on alcohol or a second wife or other um, things that don't benefit the household. Studies have shown that if women are also included in household decision making and community decision making, that extra income that comes into the community and comes into the family is better spent on family, on education, on nutrition and health. One big issue that we also see is the inclusion of youth. The, the age, average age of coffee farmers is increasing across the world, and many youth are choosing not to work on coffee farms. In fact, you ask their parents, and they say, what's your ambition for your children? And they say, definitely not to work on the farm. I would rather they went and did something else. This is going to be a huge issue for the coffee sector in, in the times to come. How can we make this an interesting business? How can we make it the ambition of every girl in the village to marry a coffee farmer? Because those are the ones with status and nice houses and a, a good livelihood. There have been uh, workshops happening so far. Many people are working towards that. And in fact, that was the first uh, event that we held un officially under the Vision 2020 umbrella in July where we came together, the ICO, 4C Association, and IDH co-hosted an event on gender and a study doing a review across the, the stakeholders to see what are you doing in gender so far? What different interventions are working? What's not working? What do you see as the big gaps to really make this work? The report will be published next month and will be available on the website. The fifth theme is climate change. I think you'll be hearing a lot more about climate change for the rest of the day, but we really see this as a big issue in the sector. In some places there's more rain, in some places there's less rain. The suitability of coffee growing areas is changing from year to year. How can we help farmers adapt to these changing practices? How can we help them uh, cope with the, uh, the changes in their environment and enable them to make a decent livelihood from coffee and from other sources as well in the years to come. Also, how can we work together to do this? The final work stream is collaboration between the sustainability standards. There are sustainability standards that have been working towards a vision of a more sustainable coffee sector for several years. 
Some of these approaches are working well, some of these are working less well, but all of them are working to improve their approach to have better livelihoods in farmers and more thriving coffee communities. How can they work together more um, in order to take advantage of the learnings that each one has had and that the rest of the sector has had to increase their impact and really make change on the ground? So these are six areas that we've identified so far that we've been working together on and that we would like to continue to work together on. This, of course, does not exclude other thematic areas, which you might think of, well, why didn't they mention productivity? Or why didn't they mention research? Or why didn't they mention renovation and rehabilitation? Why didn't they mention many other topics? Those can all be thematic areas under the network of Vision 2020. If you're really committed to acting on those and investing in solutions and working together and collaborating more to build on what others have done, to bridge the gaps between different countries for more impact on the ground. So please join us. Join the discussion, bring your initiatives, bring your investments, bring your ideas, bring your uh, best case practices, bring your worst case practices, bring your successes and bring your failures. Bring them to share with the rest of the coffee sector and perhaps with other sectors as well, um, to work together for a more sustainable coffee sector. We're currently planning another engagement event, or more engaging event, um, at the World Coffee Conference in Ethiopia. Between now and then, there are also many other events happening in origin countries and in Europe and the US. And we also hope to get your ideas and to see what do you really want to work together on what do you want to invest on? And let's just make it happen. Here's our new website. It will be, uh, should be online, if not now, then later on this afternoon, www.vision2020.coffee. Uh, bring your ideas, your questions, your comments. Here are our contact details of Aneta, myself, and uh, Dr. Christoph Sanger from the ICO, who will be the main contact point for Vision 2020 there. Join us, join the discussion, and we look forward to acting together and working together for a stronger coffee sector. Thank you very much.